Want to know what questions I ask my beta readers and how I organize their feedback? This is the fourth video in a series where I'm sharing my personal experience with my first round of betas in the hopes that sharing my process and what I've learned helps you figure out how you want to run your round of beta readers. If you want to know how to find beta readers, how to schedule them, and even more, definitely check out my first three videos, which I'll link below and in the cards. But in this video, we're going to focus more on how to get feedback from beta readers answering questions like, what are the best questions I should be asking my beta readers? And how should I organize their feedback? To help you out with this, I'm actually going to be showing you my exact questionnaire that I sent out my beta readers so you can get some ideas about what you might want to be asking your beta readers too. Then I'll show you how I prepped my folders in my computer to receive this feedback and how I organized and did all the geeky stuff like that. If you want to know more of how I physically and emotionally processed my beta readers feedback, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell so you don't miss that video when it comes out. And I'm also thinking of doing one more video where I do a more live Q&A answering any additional questions you guys have. So definitely let me know if you'd like to see that live stream and what other questions I haven't answered that you'd love to see answered during the live Q&A. Thanks again to my awesome patrons for their support and requesting this great series. So much love to you guys and let's get into my beta reader questionnaire. All right, so I'm actually going to show you two different versions of my questionnaires. One where I sent out a page questionnaire for every single chapter that my betas read and another where I did one page questionnaire for certain weeks that I sent a larger group of chapters and I wanted them to be reading more but answering less questions. So I gave them more overall questions for the section of chapters instead of each individual chapter. I talked a little bit about why I did this in my last video but as a summary basically I thought that it was really going to be helpful to have more nitty gritty details for each individual chapter. And I think it actually was for my first few chapters that I felt really strong about. But as I got to later in the book where I knew it was a little messier and I just needed even more just bigger general developmental thoughts, I switched to giving them more chapters at a time and giving them the shorter questionnaire, the one page questionnaire for the whole section. So let me show you both what questions I asked, what I thought was most helpful, and why I basically did what I did. So for the questions that I asked per chapter, I separated into a few different sections. First, I wanted to know their initial thoughts. What were your first reactions, feelings, thoughts after reading this chapter? And this could just be really quick. It didn't have to be super lengthy. I just wanted to know their guttural reaction after reading the chapter. The second thing I thought that was really important was what are your thoughts, feelings about the main character? And if you get this template by being a patron, this is where you would insert the name of your main character. Definitely in the first chapter or so, you might want to put the main character's name just in case you have a few characters it might be a little fuzzy on who is the main person but your main character's character arc is one of the main things you want to track throughout the story and be able to figure out what is strong and what is weak because that is really the heart of your story so I thought that that was really important to ask then I asked more generally about characters so this included not just my main character but also my side characters which characters did you like the most and why so again, made that really clear that I wanted to know why, not just facts, but reasoning. So I could then process feedback and figure out the best ways to fix things. And I did indicate that, again, it's main character, side characters, and even antagonistic characters, because they could like a antagonistic character a lot. And I just wanted to remind them of that. The second question was, which characters did you like the least and why? How could they be improved? Sometimes I got answers of more like, this character is well-developed, but I don't like them because they're a jerk. And that's totally fine. But I added this question because I really wanted to know if they thought any characters really needed to be improved, not just that they liked them or disliked them as if they were a real person. Then I asked about scenes and the questions I asked were what part, scene, or aspect of this chapter did you like the most and why? Which part scenes did you like the least and why? Again, how could they be improved? And again, I'm separating sort of character development and then the scene or the chapter as a whole. So I could really get a feel for both and again, figure out how I wanted to edit with this feedback. And I really like this question that I know by being a beta reader for Bethany Atazada that she had and I really liked it. Were there any parts or aspects of this chapter that were confusing, unclear, or hard to envision? So sometimes people just put that in what they liked the least, which was fine. But just in case any scenes especially were hard to envision or just certain pieces were confusing, I wanted those things to be really clear to me so I could go back and fix those for sure. Then I just had a round of like quick answer questions. And I said, these answers can be more like a sentence or two. And the first thing I said, on a scale of one to five, how much did you enjoy this chapter? So 
so I wanted to gauge their enjoyment of the chapter overall. And I've had people that I've baited for it in the past ask like, gauge on one through five or one through 10, but it was all very relative and it was often hard for me to be totally consistent in rating certain chapters. So I added some verbiage around the rating system. So number one meant you didn't like it at all. Two meant you sort of liked the chapter. Three meant you liked it. Four meant you really liked it. And five meant you loved it so much. So I wasn't really comparing chapter to chapter in the sense of like, I liked this chapter more than this chapter, but I wanted them to take each chapter and say, what did you think about it? How much did you enjoy this chapter? And then my rating system gave me the verbiage even if they didn't sort of expound on how much they enjoyed it. Number nine said on a scale of one to five, how eager are you to read the next chapter? So sometimes the chapter they read maybe wasn't their favorite, but they were still really eager to read the next chapters because they were still engaged in the story. And sometimes if I had a chapter or two that was a little slower and they rated more in the lower end, I could then see a trend where maybe they were becoming less eager to keep reading. I actually did like a whole spreadsheet where I took all these numbers and found averages. And again, I'm a nerd. <laughs> but if you like all that kind of stuff and that really helps you, then having some numerical value might help. And again, I gave each number some verbiage. So number Number one, they weren't eager at all. Number two, they were sort of eager. Number three, they were fairly eager. Number four, they were very eager. And number five, they needed to read it right now. I really loved question number 10 as well. Do you have any predictions or anything you hope will happen? I think there is a distinction between these two where some people might think, oh, I'm seeing this foreshadowing. I think this is going to happen. But that might be different than what they hope will happen. And there were a couple of things that people did bring up that they hoped would happen that I didn't even think of that I was like, that would be really cool to tie in in the next round of edits. I could also tell from this question which characters they were really invested in and which plot lines were really reaching them. I also loved this next question, number 11. Do you have any favorite lines from this chapter? If so, which ones? I did ask them in the weekly emails, hey, make sure to take notes while you're reading so it's easier to figure out what you're gonna say in the questionnaire. And some people loved highlighting or writing down their favorite lines and putting them in this section. And it just made me so happy to know what lines were really grabbing them, which ones I should definitely not change or delete. And also, if you are wondering what to call your book, if you don't have an official title for it, you could go back through these favorite lines because sometimes people pick lines from their book to then be the title of their book. And finally, I just asked any other thoughts or questions for me, just in case there was anything that I didn't cover that they wanted to express. Then I copied and pasted this for the other additional chapters that I sent them. And I added one more section at the end, usually about two to three questions. And the first one was usually overall, what are your thoughts and feelings on the story and its pacing in these chapters like as a whole. And asking about pacing is always really great to ask. I got a lot of really great insights on this question. Sometimes even I thought the pacing was slow, but a lot of people thought it was fine or vice versa. Then I usually had a question that was maybe a little more connected to these chapters. And for this one that I copied, I had just said, what do you think about the world of my story so far? And that was something that was important to me. And then another frequent question that I asked was, was there anything you wished there was more or less of in these chapters? And that was also really telling and really helpful to know. I also sometimes went back and either added a specific question or changed a certain question in the chapter questions because I was really either concerned with a specific scene or a specific character. I tried not to do that too much because I didn't want to direct my betas. I really wanted to see what would organically come out of their answers without me guiding them. But there were a couple times that I did have specific questions that I just, again, inserted or replaced one of these questions with a more specific chapter question. Now, if you're more of a person that just wants to ask a few questions for a certain section of your book and larger number of chapters all at once, which again is what I did sort of closer to the end of sending out parts of my manuscript. I might format it like this, where I say, please read all chapters before answering these questions. I put the chapter number range here. And then I asked some similar questions, but I just formatted it to more apply to a bunch of chapters at a time. So I said, what are your thoughts and feelings about the main character's growth in these chapters? So again, more about the main character's character arc. What were your favorite parts? Who were your favorite characters and why? 
so I did sort of all the favorites in one question, so scenes and characters. And then what parts or characters did you feel like could be improved? Were any parts confusing? Anything you wish there was more or less of? So basically everything they thought could be improved overall, character, scenes, whatever. Then I usually put in some kind of section specific questions, sort of like how sometimes I would do chapter specific questions. And I would just say if you haven't already mentioned above, and then I would put in the question. Then I'd said on a scale of one to five, how much did you enjoy this section as a whole? And followed that up with on a scale of one to five, how eager are you to read the next section? And these look very familiar as well. Do you have any predictions or anything you hope will happen? Did you have any favorite lines? If so, which ones? And any other thoughts or questions for me? Again, I would use this if you're less wanting more nitty gritty stuff for each individual chapter and you're just looking for overall feedback for a certain section. I'm thinking about maybe doing my next round where I would send a quarter of the book at a time where I would send act one and then the first part of act two, the second part of act two, and then act three. So either way, I think you can take these questions and use them in whatever format you think you wanna send your chapters. Additionally, I wanted to show you some questions I asked my betas when they had finished the entire book because I felt like I wanted some overall feedback based on what they thought of the book as a whole and not just in sections or in chapters. So the first question I asked was about the main character and the finished arc, and again, super important to make sure that your character's character arc is strong and central and makes sense and is satisfying. So I asked, what did you think of my main character's journey and growth by the end of the book? The second question I asked was on a scale of one to five, how much did you enjoy the book as a whole? And again, I gave qualifiers for whatever number they picked. The third question I asked was the strengths and weaknesses. What did you think were the strongest or best aspects of the book and what were the weakest aspects or the biggest things I could work on improving for the next draft? And for me, I'm going to be submitting to this round of pitch wars. So I actually worded this, like what could I be improving to then submit to pitch wars? what would be the most important things to focus on. So if you have a certain goal or deadline or thing you're submitting to, you could also add that so they know what to focus on. Number four was if you were to describe this book to a friend, how would you describe it and what comps or comparable titles would you compare it to? And this is really helpful for both self-publishing and traditional publishing. If you're wanting to traditionally publish, the verbiage that your betas give you could help you shape your query and also know what comps to include if you're self-publishing it could also shape what your blurb looks like. Number five was on a scale of one to five, how eager are you to read the sequel? And I gave qualifiers for all the numbers. And obviously this only applies if your book is going to be a series. But again, great question to add if it is. Additionally, I would also ask, would you be interested in beta reading the sequel in the future? I know a lot of my friends have used similar beta readers that were really helpful in book one for the rest of the series and also mixing in some other people that have only read the final edition of the first book. So they have a mix of perspectives. Again, if you're writing a series, number seven would be great to ask, do you have any predictions or anything you hope will happen in book two? And I forgot to say this earlier, but with predictions, it's really great to ask because they could be predicting like the whole series. And in that sense, maybe you're making your story too predictable, but you also wanna see if they're predicting anything super outlandish because then maybe you're not being clear enough or foreshadowing things that you shouldn't be because then your readers are going to be disappointed when those kind of things don't happen. And again, anything you hope will happen is great because you can also get some ideas that could fill in some plot holes or just beef up some subplots for you as well. I really like question number eight for anyone that is still figuring out what their final book title is going to be. So I asked, I've been thinking about renaming this book to book title X. What do you think? Any other ideas? So again, your beta readers have read your entire book. They can let you know if they think that title fits your book, if it's a strong one, or if they have any other ideas. Number nine, any other thoughts or questions for me? And finally, if I have further questions or have any other ideas I'd like to float out to a few of you as I do another round of edits, would you like to be included in those emails? And I know not everybody does this, but especially if you have some really great betas, I knew that there were some things that I would probably want further feedback on. So I wanted to know if they would be open to receiving periodic emails from me to help me troubleshoot some things in the future. Then to just show you real quick how I organized everything as questionnaires were coming back in, I first created a folder for every round or every week I was sending out chapters and they automatically got organized because I would put the number of the round first, the word round, and then the numbered chapters I was sending. Then in each of these folders, I would first set up a send folder 
and I would first put the chapters in a Word doc, but then convert it to a PDF that I would send everyone. Then I would also set up the questionnaire doc, and I used this as a template for every week and then adjusted it based on what kinds of questions I wanted to ask. So these two docs are the things that I would send every week, and I made sure to title it with a shorthand for my book, so PFF for Project Fairy Fantasy, which is what the original sort of working title was. Then I did 04 for round four, a little dash, and then chapters 10 through 12 for this round. And then when I would receive the document back, I would just put an underscore and then their name so that all of the beta reader feedback would show up in alphabetical order. Then what I'll also show you next week is how I created a compiled compiled file where I organized all of the feedback into one file so it is searchable, I added headers so it's clickable, and it just made everything so much easier to sift through later. Again, pre-setting up these folders and then the send folder and these docs just really helped to make everything smooth, especially making sure that what I titled everything, things would show up in an organized fashion for every single round. Got any other great questions you love to ask your beta readers or ways you like to organize their feedback? Definitely let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like the questionnaire template or any templates I've given with this video series, definitely check us out over on Patreon, where you also get a whole backlist of videos, posts, resources for your writing journey, plus more personal help from me. If you need to catch up on any other videos in this series, I've linked the playlist in the description below, or you can check out one of these two writing related videos, and we'll see you there.